The level 15 mm -hmm. is pretty high. Uh, and if you're being harried by a lot of wisdom saves, if your DM loves to use those and loves to mind control everybody all the time, and you know you're not going to get to level 15, you might have to bite the bullet. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a bullet I can bite. If I know I'm getting something eventually, even if I know the campaign isn't going that far, just psychologically, no, that I can't do that. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Cameron, a.k.a. Prince Phantom. And today we're breaking down his uh, his top picks for the best feats for the rogue class. Yeah, rogues are pretty underpowered, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, they've got some good subclasses, a lot of really bad ones. Uh, but today we're just talking generic rogue. Um, yes. What the rogue is really looking for from its feats are ways to increase its damage, because... <laughs> Its damage is very low. It's probably one of, if not the lowest in the game. Uh, it's got plenty of utility already in terms of skills, but it lacks magic unless you're doing something like Arcane Trickster. So we'll also be looking at feats that might supplement us with a little bit of magic that may help in the roguey things that we're trying to do. Okay, great. Um, all right, now rogues can either go melee or ranged, I think. I always I play a lot of rogues. I always go ranged. Um, yeah, that's the that's the typical way that I see most players do it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> even some some rogues might like to use daggers, which can either be thrown or stabbed with in melee. So you you can kind of have a bit of flexibility there if you want. Sure. Uh, but a, uh, most people default to range because the rogue as a class is very squishy. You only get a D eight hit die. Your armor class isn't fantastic. And you don't really have any defensive features outside of Uncanny Dodge, which can only apply to one attack per round and eats your reaction, which is actually very useful for a rogue. Yeah. And Evasion, which only applies to Dexterity saves. So. Oh, and yeah, they I mean, do also get... Like, uh, as a rogue, you know, just thematically, I don't want to be up in people's faces. That's... If I, yeah. wanted to, if, I, if I wanted to straight up brawl, I'd be a fighter or a barbarian, you know? Yeah, um, I should also mention that uh, rogues do get a uh, feature later on in levels that give them proficiency in one of the mental saving throws. Uh, I believe it's wisdom, but I'm double checking that now. Uh, but in that case, you know, we'll get to talk about stuff like resilient, and maybe that's not as big of a deal for rogues. So that's one good thing. But uh, good thing. speaking for speaking for you know what you're going to be doing as opposed to ranged or melee focused ranged is kind of the default and with that of course that we're going to be talking about sharpshooter and crossbow expert crossbow expert is actually a much bigger deal on rogues than it is on other classes because it gives you a second chance to hit your sneak attack can you do and we have you can't do so two times. sneak attacks per round right. yeah that's you, what i'm asking you can only sneak it. attack once per round the problem is if you miss but now you've sneak attack none per round. So having two opportunities mm -hmm. to do it is great. You're yes. doubling your chance of landing your sneak attack every round. And sneak attack is pretty easy to land in uh, tabletop 5e. I've actually found if you're coming into this looking at it from Baldur's Gate 3 perspective, sneak attack is actually very hard to land in that game because it's much oh, yeah. more strict. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the rogue isn't that good in that game. But anyway, it's a topic for a different video. But Point being, sneak attack is very easy to land. You can set it up almost every turn. And uh, if you can make two attacks, it's much better to make two attacks because you're doubling your chance to hit. And it, hey, if you and, hit and you sneak attack on your first hit, second free attack. It's great. Yeah. And, you know, sneak attack notwithstanding, you're still uh, hopefully going for two sharpshooters. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. The rogue typically. Without crossbow expert, I would caution against picking sharpshooter because that reduced accuracy can actually hurt your overall damage more on a rogue than it would on something like a fighter, because you're only making that one attack. Yeah, but I'm never but not crossbow doing expert. That. Yeah, fair enough. But what I'm saying is crossbow expert yeah. balances that out. Where now you're making two attacks, and now it's no longer going to be sometimes worse that you had sharpshooter. So right. it. The two the two feats work together even better on a rogue than they do on other martial classes. 
That's great. Um, now, uh, I did look it up, by the way. Uh, rogues at 15th level do get proficiency in wisdom saving throws. So we won't necessarily have to talk about resilient for wisdom here today. So that's good. <laughs> that's um, and the I only did video. Want... Yeah, well, I did want to mention that if you do want to play melee, there's a pretty obscure but very cool way to do it. Uh, printed in the uh, Eberron book, uh, Wayfarer's Guide to Eberron, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. um, there was a feat and a weapon type introduced uh, called the Double-Bladed Scimitar and a feat associated with it called Revenant Blade. Okay. So the Double-Bladed Scimitar, what it does is it is a 2d4 damage weapon, which is unique. Um, averages out to be about a little bit better than a d6, a little bit it's it's about a d8, a, technically like a little bit better than a d8. Um, and what it allows you to do is with the with the double blade scimitar, you make one attack, and, and then you can actually make a bonus action attack with that uh, double blade and scimitar, only dealing a d4 damage. But that is still a bonus action attack, and that is still potentially attack. exactly yeah. yeah. Um, now, the problem with the double bladed scimitar is that it's not a finesse weapon by default. The Revenant Blade feat, though, makes it a finesse weapon. Oh, that's nice. So uh, it also gives you a plus one AC while you're wielding the scimitar. Um, so it bumps your defense a little bit. But more importantly, it makes the scimitar available to use for sneak attack. Because for a weapon to be used for sneak attack, it either has to be ranged or have the finesse property. Um, well, yeah, that's definitely... That's uh, that's interesting. That's a... Uh... Good, uh, yeah, so, good find there. Yeah, so with uh, n normally with other classes, the double blade scimitar is kind of a niche thing. It's not super useful because they can use heavy weapons and they can use pole arms combined with pole arm master. And it's giving you more overall damage than a revenant blade would. However, on a rogue, heavy weapons aren't an option. So therefore, the double bladed scimitar is actually a fantastic option for maximizing your melee damage if that's um, the route you want to take. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now and uh... It also in includes a, a ability bump. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Dex strength, uh, you know, plus one. That's good. Yeah, so you can bump up your dex as well. It's it's really, really fantastic, and I I highly recommend if you haven't tried out that playstyle before. It's a really neat way to play a melee rogue and still pump out a decent amount of damage. Great. And you get to play. You get to. Everybody loves Darth Maul, right? That's that's. <laughs> That was always my favorite character from the prequels, anyway. And you get to, you know, be the guy with the double-bladed sword. I can't say I had a favorite character from the prequels. Well, okay, he wasn't that good in Episode One. In the expanded universe, they made him a lot better. Anyway, so uh, past that, um, if you take the ranged route, uh, and actually, um, yeah, it's only if you take the ranged route. Elven accuracy might be an interesting option for you. Oh, absolutely. Um, I don't. I don't talk about Elven Accuracy super often. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit overhyped. You, normally, you don't need super advantage on your attacks. Normally, regular advantage will be fine. Um, however, with the Rogue, accuracy is crucial. Yes. And if you can find ways to improve your accuracy, take them. Rogues have an easy way to get advantage on their attacks through steady aim. So you can use this every round if you want to. Um, elven accuracy could even be used to replace crossbow expert if you wanted to if you'd rather your rogue use a bow because that's giving you uh, the bonus with sharpshooter to damage while also fixing your accuracy you just take steady aim every turn and you keep firing with super advantage every turn of course this is limited to only elves so if you want to do this you have to play an elf uh, which also means you're not getting a feat at level 1 so keep that in mind um but if it is a definitely a, a route that I could definitely see some merit in taking. Well, that's all right because uh, going through the, the written version of this uh, this list here, it doesn't take us too long to get to lucky. So it doesn't yeah, look like well, we have a, a whole lot of uh, rogue specific feats here. Yeah, we're we're kind of plowing through them. Um, I should with the you know the whole elven accuracy thing. It's there is a real cost, even with the rogue, of not getting a feat at level one. Yeah. And some tables, a lot of tables, just house rule it that everybody gets a feat at level one. In that case, go go nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Do what you want. But rules is written. You don't, unless you play a human or a custom lineage. Um, and even the rogue, 
who may not have a ton of feats that synergize with them, still really wants a feat at level one to grab something like Crossbow Expert because it's immediately useful to them right from the beginning. Or to grab something like Revenant Blade if you're going to be in melee. So it's it's still really, really helpful to get that feat at level one, even on a rogue, which is a character that's not super feat starred, and I should mention, gets an extra feat uh, or ability score improvement at level 10. So fighters get like three extra, rogues only get one, but it's still one yeah. more than everybody else, yeah, so sure. that's cool. Um, <laughs> so at level 10, you can look forward to that and you can pick up an extra feat uh, compared to everybody else. Um, so past that, we start getting into magic granting feats. Um, stuff like Magic Initiate and Ritual Caster. I think Ritual Caster on a Rogue is really, really, really good. Um, although I will say Magic Initiate does have a place if you want to use something like Booming Blade. It's a really easy way to get it if you don't want to go Ar Arcane Trickster. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of Melee Rogues will incorporate something like Booming Blade into their playstyle. Well, we all know Fine Familiar is wonderful. I yeah. imagine, especially fits, for Rogues and they're kind yeah, of fits into the Rogues yeah. want to get doing um what other ritual spells are particularly good for rogues uh detect magic obviously is a good one unseen servant is actually a fantastic ritual that no, doesn't get talked no. about enough um it's it basically gives you an indestructible uh untargetable servant that can't attack anything but can do basically anything else uh it's really good even in combat you can you can give it a wand of magic missiles people don't don't sleep on the unseen servant <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in on in out of combat exploration, it can be used to, to check for traps, do all the other stuff that you would yeah. use an expendable resource for. Um, also, when you get into higher levels, uh, stuff like uh, telepathic bond is really, really, really helpful because that allows interparty communication over long distances silently. Which is yeah. that's a, every rogue wants that. That's the whole fantasy of you know the whole team working together, saying I'm in position. You know. The heist, yes, yeah. Um, there's also uh, Lehman's Tiny Hut, which is a really useful defensive spell uh, that is mostly intended to be used for out of combat resting. But if you're clever with it, you can abuse it. And the rogue players are nothing if not clever, right? I like to think so. <laughs> I'm that, sure you do. That doesn't always uh, manifest like you think it yeah. might. Now, I will say Ritual Caster does require a 13 in Wisdom, so... I would say most rogues should probably be shooting to get a 13 in Wisdom, but for some, like an Arcane Trickster who's also prioritizing Intelligence, it might be a little bit difficult. So just keep that in mind as you're building your character. If Virtual Caster is something you want to go for, make sure you plan ahead for it. All right, what um, else? Um, we have the the Touched. Yeah, Faye, Faye and Shadow Touched. Um, rogues definitely have an argument for picking Shadow Touched over Faye Touched in comparison to other classes. I mean, invisibility on rogues is just yeah. really good. Yeah, um, you become so stealthy that you stealth into the next campaign. It's great. Uh, <laughs> the pass that silent image is also a great pickup for rogues. You can use it to obscure your area. You know, if you're just in a cave or something, silent image or rock over yourself. Yeah, who's gonna who's gonna investigate the rock, right? <laughs> um, so there's that, and of course, if you want to take Fey Touch, perfectly fine too. Uh, rogues don't have short range teleportation. Uh, the no, only one that does get it, uh, besides Arcane Trickster getting, yeah, Arcane Trickster can take spells to get it. Um, the Soul Knife does get yeah, a Soul ability knife. that everybody else, yeah, everybody else is lacking any short range teleportation. So Misty Step will go a long way there. Uh, Bless could provide a bunch of uh, utility for you if you have a turn where you see, I'm not going to be able to sneak attack this turn. Things just didn't line up. And mm -hmm. there's not really a lot that I can contribute to this turn. Casting Bless is great. And sure. you'll do you'll be a huge benefit to your party. And I will I will say, uh Arcane Tricksters can use this to pick up extra spells that they have, you know, a very limited amount of spell slots. So this can help them almost sort of catch up a little bit to some of the other like half casters in yeah. their amount of spell slots. So an arcane trickster could take something like Fey Touched and grab Silvery Barbs, which is a spell they could already take normally. Uh, but it's, you know, helpful to have an extra casting of it. Helps everybody else's spells land, things like that. So both are great options. You might want both. You know, you could really see, I could really see taking that, especially if you want to take, like, you know, you get your martial feats at level one and level four, 
and then at level eight and level ten, you pick up you know these two feats. I think that's a great option. Yeah, sure. Um, I, won't, I would not argue with that. I mean, rogues, look, the rogue skills that they have, just paired with magic, feel powerful. Yeah, it's it, it it's kind of like how the bard gets to just do that. Yeah, if they want to, right? So it yeah, it's bard kind of eating rogue's cake a little bit there, but and being a full caster. Yeah, exactly. So. You're really just trying to play catch up with a lot of this, and I'm sorry that I don't have better to give you, but the met yeah. there they were very restrictive, I will say, with the magic granting feats in this game. They were very careful with them, and they made sure that they never hardly ever gave you a spell over second level. And mm. not many uses of it either. So there's not much I can do for you in terms of feats to fix that. Multiclassing, on the other hand, oh boy. But <laughs> different topic. Um yes, it is. <clears throat> perhaps we'll get there. Yeah. So I will oh, we've, say we've been there. What am I talking about? I'm talking to Cameron. Yeah. 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 yeah with some of the builds we've done. <laughs> if you ever want to see five classes in a single build, then mm. I've got you covered. So, uh, and of course, you're not looking at resilient necessarily for wisdom saves, unless I will say, if you know your campaign's not going to level 15, and level 15 mm -hmm. is pretty high. Um, and if you're being harried by a lot of wisdom saves, if your DM loves to use those and loves to mind control everybody all the time, and you know you're not going to get to level 15, you might have to bite the bullet. Um, um, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if that's a bullet I can bite. If I know I'm getting something eventually, even if I know the campaign isn't going that far, just psychologically, no, that I can't do that. Yeah, and it's even worse because Slippery Mind just gives you proficiency in wisdom saves. You can't, mm. like, swap it out. Like, a lot of features, if they give you proficiency in wisdom saves, like uh, the Gloomstalker Ranger has this, <laughs> excuse me, at level 7. Um, they get proficiency in wisdom saves. They mm. already have proficiency in wisdom saves, though. They can choose intelligence or charisma. Yeah. Rogue doesn't get that. <laughs> no. So, yeah, it is it is a tough pill to swallow, but maybe if if not you can always take it for something like constant uh, constitution especially if you're an arcane trickster help you keep concentration on your spells but, yeah um past that lucky is iconic for rogues um and i can't argue with that fact i do argue that it's not ban worthy at a power level but i can't argue that it's it fits really well on a rogue yeah um, sure. thematically not not in not in any small part thanks to a certain character from critical role who used that feet very religiously and was a rogue and did all the roguey things so you know popular things make other things popular right i i'm i don't i haven't watched that it's fine it's <laughs> it, it is hundreds of hours of people talking to try and get somebody into so yeah i, I don't recommend trying <laughs> anyway point being lucky's good works on rogues i really 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 want to recommend that you hold off on your lucky uses and don't just use them for your random sa uh, uh, random ability checks. Save them for your saving throws because rogues kind of suck at them if they're not dexterity saving throws. You get three. I, mean, I, I don't want to... I'd rather blow through them than end up not using them. That's fair, and I agree with that fact. Use your resources. It's, I guess it depends on the day, right? If you know you're not going to have a lot of combats that day, sure, use them kind of whatever you want. But if you're going into a dungeon or something, be picky. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, all right. All right, well, is that about it? Yeah, unless you came up with anything else that you think. Like I said, there's not a ton in Rogue that synergizes well. That's why the class is kind of low on the tier list of power level. You can still have fun with it. It's still, it's still perfectly functional. Um, but it kind of shares the same problem with the monk in that not not to the uh, same extent of the monk, to be clear. No. But the fact that it doesn't I mean, get your attack and doesn't get spells just makes it kind of lame. Yeah, but with the uh with with, with the sharpshooter crossbow expert con uh combo, you you can reliably get two attacks in. And yeah. uh with pretty decent damage, especially if you can work out like the elven accuracy thing on top of yeah. that make make sure both of those land yeah that's uh so that counts as extra attack yeah and you know just keep in mind that is using your bonus actions you're not dashing or disengaging or yeah. anything like that but it, it totally can work 
And like I said, I did mention the Revenant Blade playstyle. Check it out. It can pump out some really good damage numbers, and it's prob probably the best way to play a melee rogue, and nobody talks about it because it's kind of buried in a supplementary book. Yeah. So. All right, well, cool. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for watching. Um, that was uh, the best feats of a rogue. And uh, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.